Yeah, I came here uh, mainly to uh, promote my uh, autobiography. Uh, this book kind of came about when I was, uh, oh, okay, yeah, this is uh, my autobiography in Chinese. The English title is uh, The Tao of Humor, an autobiography by Jiu Wang, yours truly. So I actually wrote down a lot of um, my la life up to, you know, like, 2011 or something, and uh, I already had you know a lot of material, and then around that time, a couple of publishers in China started to contact me about writing a biography. So, uh, in the beginning, I wanted to uh, write it uh, in Chinese, but I tried you know about 2,000 words. It took me forever, and then I calculated the number of words, and uh, I figured if I have to type every word in Chinese. It's going to take me about five months just to complete the first manuscript, and let alone all the editing and stuff. But uh, fortunately, the, the Cidic Press, the publisher, is very kind. They basically just said, oh, why don't you just translate it uh, orally, record it, and send it to us. And then we can just uh, type it up for you and send it back to you so you can do the revisions. So we kind of went back and forth like that, and that's how uh, I completed the book. I tried really hard to become a U.S. citizen, and uh, I had to take these uh, American history lessons where they ask us questions like, who's Benjamin Franklin? We're like, oh. <laughs> the reason our convenience store gets robbed What's the Second Amendment? We're like, oh. <laughs> the reason our convenience store gets robbed? Oh, I usually mix them up. Um, it's a clever way. Uh, yeah, yeah, because uh, it's not easy to come up with new material. You have to practice a lot. You know, Some people said that uh, it takes about 72 times before you can actually get every word right, all the, uh, the tone, the inflections right. So it takes a lot of practice. So as a performer, you just have to uh, mix the new with the old. There's, there's no way around it. So. I think I'm just curious about language. You know, I'm always curious uh, why people say, it in, say things in a certain way. Uh, when I was in the United States, um, there's no Google. There's no search engines. That was in the mid-90s. You know, if I... S yeah, if I uh, see some words in, in a book I don't understand, I write it down. Or uh, um, I heard a word on TV I don't understand, I will write it down and ask my classmates. Yeah, but sometimes it gets embarrassing. You know, once I ask my classmate, hey, I heard this term tampon, what does this mean? Like, oh no, <laughs> they have to explain that to me. You know? But uh, I ended up uh, collecting a lot of American idioms and jokes. Um, so basically the writing process. Um, I think every, every person approaches it differently. Um, and the way I do it is uh, I basically uh, make a lot of ob observations yeah. about life. Um, it's very interesting because uh, one of my fe fellow stand-up comedians and myself did an experiment. One day we s uh, sit on a bench on the, on the, on the street. And uh, we basically sit there at the, exactly the same spot at the same time. We should write down what we see. Okay. And then about 15 minutes later, we check notes. We compare notes. And yeah, it's a totally different. Yeah, so it just goes to show that everybody sees different things in exactly the same situation. So that's why I think it's very important to always observe, write down what you think. And uh, if something strikes you as a funny, you should write it down because you know nobody has uh, that good, good of a memory. You know it just goes by like that. Sometimes you just forget. Uh, I used to have a like a brown notebook about this size, always in my pocket. Yeah. Just to write it. Do you have? Oh, I, oh, I probably had twenty, thirty. That's yeah, but funny. yeah, but that's uh, not a lot. Then later on, I upgraded into like bigger notebooks, you know, because uh, with bigger notebooks you can expand your thoughts more. When I was in China, we had uh, like uh, composition classes. You know, you write articles. The teacher says, "Oh, you write the subject. You, every article has to have a beginning, the middle, and the end." 
And I never liked those writings. I never liked writing articles when I was in China. And uh, later on, I learned that uh, there's another another professor. Basically, the way he teaches is uh, his requirement for students is uh, you just go home and write for six hours a day, six days in a row. You can wear anything you want. You know, if you hate me, write about how you hate me. If you don't like the class, write write about how you don't like the class. Just write anything as long as you put your pen onto the paper for six hours a day for six days, you're done. So the students go home and they write whatever it comes to their mind. And six days later, the teacher, told, the professor, told them to uh, uh, go back and look at their notes, and they use this pair of scissors and cut out all the lines that they found interesting. Oh. And then they reorganize the lines, and every student has a, some pretty interesting article there. So I think that's a, a process that follows the na- uh, the way people think naturally. You know, like nobody wakes up thinking, chapter one. <laughs> no, they wake up in the morning, chapter two. You know, because a lot of the time our, our thinking is not that organized. But you have to uh, somehow capture the moment and then organize about it later. I was in that delivery room, holding out my son, thinking to myself, "Wow, he was just born, and uh, he's already a U.S. citizen." So I said, uh, "Do you even know who's Benjamin Franklin?" <laughs> That's the thing. A lot of them has this misconception of uh, how you learn stand-up comedy. Yes. They still uh, remember the Chinese way, because in China you have to uh, have a master. You know, you have to go to a school. Oh, like in the United States, there's no school for stand-up comedy. There's no. You, have to, you don't have a teacher. And what you do is that you basically you can have a night class. It's pretty cheap, you know, like six classes about you know 150 dollars. Okay. That comes down to about 25 dollars a class. It's just like, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that just gives you the basics. And from that point on, you just have to go to the comedy clubs and uh, practice. You know, that's the only way you can learn it. You practice it yourself. Uh, you can write. Something that you you think is hilarious, but you, when you go on stage, you know it could be a completely different story. There's always practice, 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 and uh, you can also talk to other comedians who are starting around the same time. So at least you know from other comedians, you, you can know oh you know there might be other opportunities out there or uh, what kind of uh, other styles styles of com- comedy you can you are interested in. It's just all trial and error, you know. That's, I think that's in that way it's even better than having a teacher because if you have a teacher, you're very influenced by the teacher's uh, style. Style, yes. yeah. He's yeah. But if you do it on your own, you're you're a bit more likely than not you're gonna create something you're, you're uniquely yours. So my wife sees me from different angle than the general audience. What are the angle? What is the angle? Yeah, for example, you know, she's very familiar with my every facial expression. You know, <laughs> sometimes if I, uh, yeah, exactly, my facial expression, my text, you know, or the way even I sit or move. Yeah. If I'm telling her a joke, uh, maybe my facial expression changes a little bit, and she will laugh. But that doesn't necessarily mean the joke is good. It could be just you know I'm doing this or something. You know, <laughs> I learned that, and then. But I still believe that uh, deep down, like people in, from different nations have similar uh, sense of humor. It's because I'm just talking about the general population. You know, if we see a uh, performer on stage, what we're what we're gonna laugh about? Those things are similar. Now I have a sign on my car that says uh, "Baby on board." <laughs> this sign is basically a threat. It just says uh, I have a screaming baby and nagging wife, and uh, I'm not afraid of dying anymore. (laughs) 